Man, Tears of the Kingdom hasn't even really been on a full day officially, I suppose. I guess for some of you guys it has been. And already the director of the game is talking about the future of Zelda and how he basically knows what he wants to do or has a pretty good idea of what he's going to do for the very next game. And we're talking about the guy who directed Skyward Sword, directed, well... Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Freaking Kingdom. We also have a few other little tidbits to throw in there for some Zelda news today. And man, we actually have a ton of news. I got way behind today because, of course, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom. You guys saw a 10-hour live stream. We got to find a way to balance those streams with the news, folks. So forgive me while I'm trying to sort out the best way to do that because I want to make sure I'm playing a good chunk of the game in front of you guys. Originally planned to play all of it. I think at this point, I'm just going to plan to play big chunks of the game, uh, but I'm still going to play on my own and then make sure that I'm getting news videos out along the way because we didn't capitalize on any of the massive amounts of news. We There's so much Nintendo news out there right now. I'm a little overwhelmed. So this is what you're going to get today. We'll have some more new, uh, videos tomorrow. But before we get into it, I just want to remind you, we are on our road to 133,000 subscribers. So I would appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's look at this stuff when we're talking about the future of the series. So I'm reading this over on Go Nintendo, and it says The Legend of Zelda Tears is going to ride on Switch less than a day ago, and we're already talking about what's next for the franchise. It's going to be obviously years, but according to Zachary Small of the New York Times, he said, it seems likely that Fujibayashi already has plans for the next Zelda game, though he hasn't even told Aonuma about it yet. Now, Zachary Small was actually chatting with Fujibayashi and was doing interviews, and while this didn't come up specifically in an interview, it sounded like it was a casual conversation they were having. And so, yeah, basically Fujibayashi told him, I, I already know kind of what I want to do for the next game. I got my ideas. I haven't told Aonuma yet, though. Uh, it's kind of crazy since Aonuma obviously has to approve of everything, uh, but Fujibayashi has clearly been proving himself over the years. He's proven to be somebody that we really have to respect. And you know what? If he's already got ideas, it does kind of make you wonder. And I haven't beat Tears of the Kingdom yet. But it does make you wonder, hey, man, is he trying to make another one like this? Is he going in a different direction? I guess time will tell. Now, we have a few other stories out here related to Zelda. First on Tears of the Kingdom, there is somebody who has, well, speedrun the game. I mean, no surprise, speedrunners get on it all the time. The current record is just 94 minutes. Uh, we found this out again thanks to Nintendo Life, and it's from Zelda speedrunner at, at, at Mr. Gymnast86. The entire speedrun is on YouTube. Now, you might go, man, 94 minutes, what the hell? Well, speedruns... There's a lot of different ones. There's 100% runs, there's any percent, there's no glitch, etc. This was an any percent run, which means anything goes. You just need to see the end credits roll. So they were able to pull that off in 94 minutes. I didn't watch any of it because, you know, I don't need all the cutscenes and a whole bunch of things spoiled for me before I get there. But it is really impressive, at least, for now. Obviously, if it's at 94 minutes now, I wouldn't be surprised if this is under an hour before the end of the month. Now, for other uh, news out there, the Ascendability actually started out as a dev cheat code. This is kind of interesting because uh, the director, Hidemaro Fujibayashi, did an interview with Polygon where he said, I don't think we've shared this anywhere else, but the Ascendability was actually the result of a debug feature that we have in the game. When I was exploring the caves, I would get to the destination where I was trying to get to, and once I checked it out, I would just use the debug code to get to the top. And I thought well, maybe this is something that could be usable in the game. And it was right around that time that Mr. Aonuma said, it's a pain to go back. And to be blunt and honest, cheating can be fun. So that's why we decided to drop it in there. Basically, they were going to make you do a lot of backtracking. And then and he's like, hey, you know what? If we don't even want to do that, why would the player? So let's throw that in. That's really cool. And I got to say, having played the game, I'm super, super excited about that. Other little fun notes about surrounding Tears of the Kingdom's launch is Xbox and PlayStation both shouted out 
uh, uh, the, the thing, Xbox put out a tweet saying, it's going to be back in Hyrule. Congrats at Nintendo of America on Tears of the Kingdom. PlayStation tweeted out, have fun up their Hylians. It's very clear that this is being treated as not just your average game. You might wonder, how can Nintendo dare charge $70 for this game? And this because this game is different. It transcends platforms. Even though it's a Nintendo exclusive, it is a game of the year level game and you can see why maybe nintendo thinks you know what there is something special about our zelda releases maybe we should be treating them as more premium and so whatever excuses you want to give hey man people are playing and people are loving it now a few other things uh going on obviously the director of final fantasy 16 went on a live stream today with a zelda oled switch shouting out nintendo and the team as well final fantasy 16 is another game of the year contender so I mean, this is just this is just absolutely insane now i could get into a whole bunch of other news stories we have out there but instead what i'm going to do because I, these other news stories i feel like need to be saved for more dedicated videos i want to actually just give you guys my initial impressions my first impressions i would say of the game so far so the abilities love them uh, you know, it, it took a while, but I, I would say I, I basically figured out master hand and, and sort of how the movement works with it. It is really wonky uh, at first, but then you start to realize how the accesses work in a way to move things the way you want. And it, look, it, it, it's a little weird at first, but it does get use, useful. Now I haven't done a lot of like major builds and flying machines all over because I want a flying stick, and I haven't come across one yet. I haven't gotten one out of those little gumball zone eye machines. So, you know, I know it's coming, and when it's coming, that's when I'll start building my super elaborate flying things I want to build. But beyond that, when I'm really looking, you know, really looking back on today's play session, you know, about 10 hours, is I don't think the starting area is as good as the Great Plateau, but I think the story is leagues ahead. So while... I do think the Great Plateau is still the literal best opening tutorial in gaming history. And I'll just say that this one seems to just basically take notes from that, but doesn't necessarily do it better. I think the Great Sky Island is, is really good. It's just after you're following up something that was literally the best in gaming history, I don't know that it hits the same. Uh, and that's okay. It doesn't really need to because the brux of the game is really what's happening below. But I do love the story setup that happens uh, during that time. And that, to me, is really cool. Now, what was a relief to me, and this is where people were getting into the whole $70 DLC thing was, oh, it's the same Hyrule. And it is the same Hyrule in many, many ways. We have the same, you know, some of the same locations and lots of same stuff. Also, I can't tell you how excited I've been re-exploring Hyrule. And I just completed the game on Master Mode the other day, you know, like Monday. So I've been playing a ton of Breath of the Wild lately. And maybe it's because I played a ton of Breath of the Wild that lately that when I dove into Tears of the Kingdom, all the differences became that much noticeable. To me, it almost feels like Hyrule has been completely reshaped. And I know that's weird because it hasn't been but having just spent all this time playing Master Mode and now diving into this, it just, it, it almost feels like a new world. It's not, it's familiar, but it, it it's weird. Like the characters are older. There's weird things happening all over the place. There's, the Koroks are just sitting around with backpacks all over. I, dude, it's, oh man, I, I, I'm having a blast. And I will say this, I went to the underground I spent a nice chunk underground, and I had a hard time leaving the underground because there's so much to see and discover and collect. Like you, like some of the the best weapons, some of the best armor pieces, some of the best of you know, e even like some of the best items to fuse with your arrows and all that are underground. So you like you're trying to spend all this time under there, but also you can kind of get your ass kicked because, frankly, the underground especially early in the game. I don't know what it's like late game, but early game is kicking my butt. Um, and it does appear to be completely open. So the underground looks like it might be the size of Hyrule. And that that is, oh boy, I'm, 
<laughs> I can't say that this game is the best game of all time, um, that it beats Breath of the Wild. What I can say is there was a moment that happened organically while playing the game. This wasn't a forced story moment or something. This was an organic thing that occurred where I fought an enemy that I have not seen what since Ocarina of Time. <laughs> like, I, and I, when I say enemy, we're talking like a mini boss fight. I, my mind was blown. It, it completely, like, I'm someone who was paying attention to some of the leaks, and this completely caught me off guard, which is one thing to remind people out there that there is so much to see and discover in this game. Like, let's say you put 40, 60, 80 hours in, and you beat the story, and you're like, yeah, I know what this game is, and it disappointed me, or is this, like, I saw some people say, you know, this game couldn't take six years. I beat it already. Hey, hey, guess what? Do you know how much there is to discover? It's not just about 100%ing and getting all the Korok seeds and doing all the dungeons and, you know, doing all the shrines and all of that. Sure, that's part of it. Do you know how many side quests there are? Do you know how many natural discoveries there are? Oh, my gosh. It is mind-boggling. And when, you know, one of the number one complaints with Breath of the Wild was enemy variety. That is just not a problem here at all. I have seen so many different enemies. Like, I'm... To the point that, like, oh, yeah, I'm still seeing some Pokemon and some of this, but also seeing so many, like, it's, oh, man, this game, guys, this game. So, I can't put it ahead of Breath of the Wild, because I don't think it's fair to even come to that conclusion at this point. There are things I like about Breath of the Wild better than this so far, but there's also things I like in this better. So, I think the whole unlocking the map situation is way cooler here than it was in Breath of the Wild. Anyways, we could be splitting straws. All I know right now is I'm really loving this game, and I'm curious for you to give your first impressions. Not final. If you're someone who's beat the game, keep it to yourself. Your first impressions of the game. I'd love to hear that down in the comments below. You guys are awesome, and maybe I'll do a whole dedicated video on this uh, after the weekend. I feel like I want to spend the weekend. I want to get a really good chunk in, and I'll, then maybe we'll give you a solid impression video. Later, guys.